Neha has twin brother. And Shorya has different brother of the internet. Uh, audio, audio to be off, please. Audio to be off, please. Yeah. Video to be uh, on. Shana has. Manat has. Can make it bigger? Somebody's audio is on, you're disturbing my class. God bless. My aunt? I'm just trying to find out whose audio is on. You can put everyone on mute. I'm just trying to put everyone on mute. Sandeep's audio is on. Where is everyone on mute? More. Is it in more? Shad. I prefer some discipline in my class actually. I asked you in the beginning to put your audio on mute. Please put your audio on mute. Now the sound's gone. Okay. So this is about, many of you have been to the Dal Lake. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world, the Srinagar Valley. This happened about 100 kilometers away from Dal Lake. And it happened when it was really snowing. It was like getting cold. It was in October. And this is what happens to the Dal Lake when it gets really snowy. But it's beautiful. But it looks very different when you see it in summer and very different when you see it in winter. Okay. So this is a map of Kashmir. Now that you, most of you are seventh class, uh, 12, 13 years old, you must understand how maps look like. It's okay, it's okay. Can someone please put the audios on mute? Okay, Gaurav, you need to take my class to say how to put audios on mute. Sure, sir. Ne Neelu, ma'am, could you just uh, uh, put everyone on mute as a setting? Audio setting. Thank you so much. It just takes the fun off a little bit because it's much better to keep the audio actually not centrally controlled so that you can speak when I ask you questions, but because somebody is not listening at all, we put it on mute. You know, when you're doing online classes, we have to be much more disciplined than real classes. And that's something all children and adults, everybody has to sort of figure. Okay. So this happened. This is Srinagar, the Dal Lake where I showed. Can you see my cursor, Neelu ma'am? Just raise your hand. Yeah, great. So, and this is Muzaffarabad, which is actually in Pakistan occupied Kashmir. And this whole incident happened here where I'm rotating my cursor. And this line around here is the border between India and Pakistan. It's called the line of control, right? On this side is Pakistan, Kashmir, Pakistan, and this side is India's Pakistan, right? We call this our Kashmir and we call this Pakistan occupied Kashmir. And this happened bang on the border. Right? So this is what happened. We go to the next slide and that's the area between Srinagar and Muzaffarabad. Now we're getting a close up of that map. Now, and that same area, this is a big mountain range called Shamshabari. This is on our side of India. And across this mountain is this village called Tandhar. Can you see the Tandhar? It is there, right? And this side is a line of control. This whole thing is a line of control. Uh, across this is all Pakistan. This is a village, big village actually. And then this is a very big pass. You have to climb up 10,000 feet from Tandhar, which is 6,000, climb up in snow and come right down. And this is where Gopalsa was on this side, a place called Chokibal on the other side. Okay. And so let's see what happened now. Now, this is how it all started. This is the line of control, soldiers on the border. And this is the Tangdhar Valley, which is the other side of the mountain range, but very much in India. 
and which because of the snow the road gets closed and for six to seven months they are stuck on the other side the only way to go there is through a trek which porters and you can take 14 hours to reach there or you have to have helicopters which come and bring you either essential supplies or somebody is really unwell needs to go to a big hospital then they go in a helicopter so there's no other way everybody else gets stuck for six to seven months and then the story begins this is the road which goes up to that pass called sadhana nastachun actually soldiers call these passes with hindi movie actress's name and sadhana was a very famous actress in the 60s so this pass is actually called sadhana pass right but it's actually otherwise called nastachun pass and this is how the uh, trucks go when it's summer and in winter it gets difficult and by october november when it really snows it closed down right now what happened is on the other side in the summer months officers wives and children are allowed to go and live with their husbands and fathers in tandhar right oops we went to the wrong side so you're allowed to go there and they were there in august and september and in october they were told it's going to snow you got to leave you got to go back but some of those ladies and children they wanted to celebrate diwali with their father and their husband and this they stayed back though the orders were it's going to snow the roads going to close you got to come back but they didn't and they thought that the close roads will not close but unfortunately it snowed and it snowed and it snowed and the entire nastashtun pass got closed and they got stuck on the other side right so this road got closed and this is what happened now the people who got stuck on the other side but not just the villagers they used to living there but all these officers wives and children 10 year old 50 year old lady a 40 year old lady they all got stuck on the other side the only way for them to get back was to walk across for 14 hours in the snow at night because during the day you have avalanches and you can only come at night because the snow freezes there no avalanches you know avalanches are these mountains of ice which come down so it melts during the day with the sun and the snow can take you down sweep you into it so it's also very dangerous so it's a very high everybody had to therefore prepare practice train and get ready to walk across at night after three weeks of practice but there was also a little 40 day old baby and there was no way that that baby could ever come so you know what happened i got a phone call and this is what the phone call said sorry if you hey, listen Papa. raise your hand this is the staff captain speaking. Today at about 10 o'clock, there will be a helicopter which will land at your post. There is a packet which will be delivered. You are to collect that packet and take good care of the contents of the packet till tomorrow morning where the DQ of the brigade will come and collect the packet okay so that's the message i got very strange message that there's a packet which will come in a helicopter and i was wondering what is this packet which cannot travel by the normal porters etc which needed a helicopter to bring it so a helicopter came in the snow where i was and i went up to the helicopter and took out this packet and the packet looked like a basket and the basket had a blanket and after the helicopter left i sort of removed the blanket and started putting my hand inside and i touched skin and when i touched skin i couldn't quite believe it because it was a baby in a basket 
And that's what I saw. And I couldn't believe that there was a baby and that was a packet and that's the packet I had to look after for the whole night. When I was 21 years old, didn't know how to look after babies. And this is what happened to the baby. The baby started throwing tantrums, very happy initially, but any food or milk we tried to give the baby, obviously the baby wasn't used to anyone other than the mother trying to give any food. So the baby was throwing a real tantrum out there, right? So fortunately for us, we had a lady, an officer's wife was staying with us and we asked her to help and sort of look after the baby the whole night. And the baby was looked after by this lady and all of us, we tried to run around and get some milk and get a milk bottle. And what was the rest of the family doing? The mother and the father, they were walking across the pass. It was a 14 hour walk in the snow at night in temperatures which were around minus five degrees. And the mountain there to climb was 10,000 feet. And remember there were no cell phones. You couldn't talk and find out how the baby was. All they knew is that the baby went in the helicopter and on an old army phone, which was moved like this, sometimes connected, they knew that the baby is reached, but they didn't know too much. And they were walking and walking across this pass and trying to reach their baby on the other side the next day morning. So that was the story. Next day morning, the mother and the father of the baby came and Finally, they joined each other and there was a lot of crying, obviously, and they hugged and they didn't quite remember who this lieutenant was who picked up this baby and uh, sort of gave it to this other lady. And they were all so excited about meeting the baby and taking care of the baby. And from there, they went in a army convoy to Srinagar. So this is what happened. And there may be lots of questions for you because I didn't say every part of the story. And you can ask me that. But this happened in 82. Then many years later, when I was telling the story to friends, they said, hey, that colonel who was then a major, who is the father of the baby, lives in Noida. So why don't you go and meet him? This is the address. So I went to their house, climbed to the first floor, knocked on the steps on the door. And I said, the lady opened and said, yes. I said, ma'am, do you remember a baby came in a helicopter? They said, how do you remember that? We were talking about that story yesterday. I said, ma'am, I received the baby. And we took care of the baby. And we had a lovely cup of tea. The baby had gone to college at that time. I couldn't meet the baby. There was no internet those days. But I had written a little blog on this. And I left that blog with them. And then sort of again, it became part of our story in our unit and part of their story in their home. But we didn't really uh, meet since then. But something really strange happened this year on the 1st of January, 2020. Uh, one gentleman and a lady walked into my office and said, you know, we read this beautiful blog of yours. Tell us about the story. And I repeated the story and said, I was wondering why they're asking for this story. And she said, well, I was the baby. Sorry to have troubled you 38 years ago. The baby, I would have troubled you at night. And what's really amazing about this story, really, really amazing, is that baby, her baby, is in seven Sariska right now. <laughs> Sonali can't believe. Siona can't believe. Right? So, can you imagine? She's been a Shivnada school child, the grandchild, or this, my baby from the sky's daughter, she's in your class. How many of you can believe that? Who all believe that? Ranveer, do you believe that? I'm going to show you photos. Varnika, come believe that. Okay. Rajeshri, can you believe that? Okay, so it's here goes. It is amazing. So that's the baby. That's the baby who I saw first when she was 40 days old. And we met in our office 38 years later. And it was so heartwarming. Then after that, I was invited to their home where I met then Colonel Vahi, her father. 
and we had a massive Punjabi dinner party, and there are all sorts of pagodas and food and everything you could believe was on the table, and we had a great time talking about something which happened 38 years ago. So that's Neha, who's also on the call. Neha, you on the call? Raise your hands, show your face, say hello, unmute. Somebody unmute. Morning, everyone. We're right here. <laughs> Morning, sir. Great to see you. Same here. All excited. <laughs> I can see you have to move a little bit. There you are, Neha. And here is the daughter which is Shaisha, and she's in your class. Yes, she Shaisha, is. raise your hand. Hi, Shaisha. Can you believe that story? It looks like a Hollywood, Hollywood story, right? And we didn't know for five years that the baby from the skies is a mother at the Shibnaru school and that her daughter is in the school. So I wanted to come to your class and tell you this story and make it as mysterious as possible. But since that didn't happen, let's, I said, let's do it this way. And let's do it through this online storytelling. So that's a baby from the skies. And that's a wonderful article Shesha wrote recently. Shesha, I read this and it's brilliantly written. Thank you. Thank you. Now we are all open to questions. We can unmute. And we can ask questions, and that's the story is over. And if you want to really read this again in a blog, you can go to my blog and you can read it, right? I wonder if I can open it. What happens if I open it, Gaurav? It will take you directly to the article. I can come back here, right? Yes. Let's see. And that is the blog. That's the blog. Yes, you have so to double click on it. Size, and I wrote it a long time ago. And, you, and if you read the blog, make sure you write comments at the bottom of the blog, okay? Sonali, ma'am, you're going to get people. Let's let's hear your comments, Sonali, ma'am. Let's let's ask the class teacher what she feels. You have oh, to my, unmute. I can I can feel butterflies in my stomach after listening to your story. Uh, Saisha's uh, mother shared uh, the article that she had written uh, last night. I did go through it and oh my god, I'm so happy that I have the baby from this guy's daughter in my class. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Any comments? Uh, or do you like the story? I, amazing story. I wanted to ask you, how come the mummy of the baby didn't come on the helicopter? that night. Uh, that's why I left those questions because you had to ask some questions. That means you're listening and it's a damn very, very good question. Okay. So the reason for that is in the army, in the air force, we're not allowed to fly civilians, right? And if you have to fly civilians in an emergency, we need to take permission from army headquarters in Delhi. There has to be a reason to do that. Now, because these people stayed back in Tandar, when they were supposed to not stay there, anyway, the army would say, it's your problem. I mean, the government can't, if they had said there's a baby, of course, they would have got the mother and the baby to come across, but people were very worried and scared. Who are you going to ask? when they said, move out of this place, don't stay here. And nobody's, in fact, even told the general in Srinagar that there's a baby there. But the DQ, which is actually uh, Neha, who's on the call, who's a parent, her father asked the pilot, who was a brave young pilot called Captain Gill. And Captain Gill said, listen, I cannot take civilians. You cannot tell me it's a baby. I know it's a baby. You just tell me it's a packet. I'm allowed to deliver packages. So he said, you tell everyone's a package to be delivered. We'll deliver a package. So that's why Neha became a package. Good. And the package was delivered. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Wonderful story. Unbelievable. <laughs> any more? <laughs> any more thoughts? Anyone? Any observations? Anyone? Children, tell us what you feel. Uh, I have a question, sir. Simriti, we need to know what your grandmother wants to ask also. Yeah, yeah. who is that? That's me, Ridhan. Actually, 
Yeah. Uh, so everyone has a question. Why don't you raise your hand in the chat box? Then I will know who to ask. If I know where the chat is, there are 11 chats there. Yes. Okay. So anyone? Uh, Aishwarya says, very nice story. You can. And Vini Ma'am says, it's a small world. And Ayana and Sanjita says, wonderful story. Or why do you type a question, then I'll ask you. Or you could ask if you raise it. Vadnika, yes, what's your question? You can ask. Uh, I'm not Vadnika, she's Vadnika. Okay. Uh, this is like a movie. It's, it's like a movie. Why don't you do one thing? Why don't you make a movie on it at school? The school has a lot of facilities. You can make a movie. You've got all the people there. And you can try and make a movie. I've told you the story. Make it into a movie. Why wait for Hollywood or Bollywood to make it? Make it yourself. You can even make it at home and put it together. Okay. But remember, it's a true story and it, it happened, right? With me and can you imagine the baby is a mother at the Shivnada school and, the, and her daughter is in your class. Yes, uh, Simriti, you had a class. You had a question. You're on mute, Simriti. Yeah. Hanji. Hmm. Namaste. This is Simriti, ma'am's grandmother. Yes. Bolo. Bolo, bolo. Sunre ne. Hello. Hanji, sunre. Namaste. Ame ko bhot acha laga ya sun karo. Ya me ko aksa sunati rehti hai Sima. Me ko bhot acha laga ya. Aaj dekh bhi rahi ho saare stories dekh liye maine. <laughs> Thank you, Ji. This is my favorite story. <laughs> I'm so glad you read my blogs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Samriti. Anyone else questions? Sir? Yes? How you felt when you saw the baby? That is a really good question. First, you know, I couldn't, I didn't even believe anywhere close to expecting a baby to come in a packet. All I expected was there was a packet. And obviously, you don't expect a human being to come out of a packet in a helicopter. That also in the snow. Actually, my first reaction, you know what happened to the baby? The baby, it was a bright sunny day. It was very snowy, niche, but out, uh, you know, on top it was like today, it was like sunny. And when I unfurled the blanket, the baby crinkled its eyes like this and said, What are you doing? Like, why are you getting the sun into my eyes? You know, that expression I can never forget saying that, What are you doing? <laughs> and, and then we covered the, covered the baby again. But I was really angry with that stuff captain who said there's a packet and ended up sending a baby. And I went chomping off the stairs and, you know, Ami had these old phones and I picked up the phone and shouted at him. I said, what the hell is this? What are you doing? He said, hold on, hold on, hold on, I will tell you the story. I said, why could you tell me it's a baby? We couldn't tell you it's a baby. Because you're not supposed to, pilots not supposed to carry a baby. We can't tell you. That's why we told you it's a packet. So initially he was angry. But then it was very nice. I like children and I thought babies are easy. They're like toys. And I thought I'll play with the baby. But I didn't realize the baby is also hungry. And the baby is also miss their mother very soon. But if it wasn't for that lady, Mrs. Butler, I have no idea what we would have done with the baby at night. This is Mrs. Butler already had two children, so she knew how to look after babies. And she spent the whole night awake tending to the baby. And Neha has to meet Mrs. Butler and thank her. Thank you, sir. So, so Yes. So how did you feed the baby? Uh, we there was some food which was in the in the basket, which is mainly milk, but because we thought and baby was really small, so uh, you know we had to be very careful. But we went to the little uh, village outside and bought some milk and Mrs. Butler made it diluted with some water called the water she did. But we had to, uh, I think there's some problem with the feeding bottle. So we went and bought one and sort of did some jugad with some nipple and God knows what all we did. But we did all sorts of things. Such a long Thank time you, ago. 
Thank you, sir. Excuse me, so? Yes. How could the baby survive in such a harsh climate? Because again, no, it's no. only 40 years old. And oh, oh, inside, you know, the army, wherever we are, however harsh the climate is outside, inside our rooms and all, we make it very comfortable. In those days, we had something called Bukharis. We still have them. Bukharis are these... Uh, things like chimney things which you put either coal or wood and you keep it warm so and the whole rooms are made out of wood so inside the room uh, from the helicopter to the room it didn't take much it was daytime and uh, during the sun it's quite okay even if the temperature is low and then very quickly it was with mrs firstly i took the baby up to my like first floor is just ground floor first floor yeah. and the baby started wailing i quickly said i can't handle this thing anymore. So I found Mrs. Batla who didn't have a problem. She was initially a bit suspicious where this baby came from. But anyway. <laughs> but then she took it. But this it is a little bit wrong. Sir. Yes. What if the what if fire caught on the house? Because it was made of wood. Then all no. the people in it would die. Yeah, but we are used to uh, these Bukharis and we know how to take care of it and there's always you know like ceasefire type of things always there so if at all that happens and in Kashmir everybody uses this we are all used to it the fires don't catch that easily okay so you use the kerovito yes how long did it take for you to walk oh I didn't have to walk so much but the parents I had to only walk from the helicopter it a helipad it's called to uh, to my room and to where Mrs. Barta was. That wasn't much. That's only like a kilometer with the baby. That's not much. But the parents had to walk for 16 hours across the mountain to come and meet their parents. Uh, to come and meet the baby. 16 hours at night. They started at 6, 7 o'clock. Neha, why didn't you tell us? If you will remember from your from your parents. When did they start? Tell us a little bit about the other side of the story. My also Neha, where are you? Right here, sir. Relishing every bit. We have been asking you to tell us what your parents said about the walking experience from the other side. Surely. Hi, can everybody hear me? A little thumbs yes. up would help. Yes? Okay, so firstly, I have uh, my parents sitting here. We are all listening to the story. A very quick uh, peekaboo I will do to show you that uh, we are all here as family, relishing this uh, story every bit. Now and uh, all these years of growing up, I had heard this story only from my parents uh, till I had met uh, my godfather, <laughs> the one who took care of me the entire night and made sure that I survive. And he's done a good job because you can see we are hale and hearty sitting here. <laughs> And uh, yes, I'd heard about how they had uh, crossed uh, the, uh, you know, that difficult pass and a lot of uh, uh, children were there. They were uh, ladies, they were pregnant ladies who had walked across the uh, snow the entire night. I think it was eight hours or 12 hours of continuous walk that they had done through the night. And uh, I also know about my mother's agony, who was uh, very, very... Uh, was wailing, I heard, through the night and very worried if she would ever see her child again because uh, uh, it would surprise you to know that my parents did not even uh, know Colonel Gopal as he has narrated. He didn't even, they didn't even know who was on the other side. But uh, I think that is Army and that's uh, the camaraderie that Army has. That's one big family. You actually uh, give a piece of your heart to somebody else to take care and they do such a beautiful job with it. So uh, now the, ho the whole story has come a complete circle, I would say. I know both the sides and I know both the sides very well. And uh, it, it's truly a very surreal experience. It doesn't happen with people, uh, you know, it, it doesn't happen in everyday lives that you, uh, you, you happen to be a part of the same fraternity. You get to know that your child is studying in the same school. You've met the person, you've seen the person and uh, you have common friends. So I think it is uh, God made, tailor made and uh, we are loving the experience. So thank you so much for taking this on here. It's, uh, it's an experience for all of us. And thank you to everybody who's taken time on Sunday to uh, attend this. Is Colonel Bahi there? He could, would you like to Hello? speak a few words, sir? How are you? I'm fine. Thank huh? you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. W2. Good morning. 
Good morning, sir. It's fantastic to see you, sir, and hear you. Uh, Shaisha, tell us what, what you felt about the story now. You must have heard it so many times. I would, uh, even after hearing it so many times, it's always a surprise. I love it. <laughs> Okay. So Can I say something? Yes. Yes, sir. You know what happened? Uh, this, the preparation for this crossing over the Nasta Chungpa, it was the decision was taking about a month before we started climbing the pass. And uh, no, it was not a uh, month. Sorry, it was about okay. ten days before that. Ten days. Yeah. It was roughly about ten days. Yeah. And uh, as it was mentioned, there were some ladies who were uh, above 50. There were children who were uh, about three years, four years. There were some pregnant ladies who were there, some fat ladies who could not walk even, you know. So I had to practice them. And the better it was, you say the temperature was somewhere sub-zero. It was minus five, ten, something like five, six, something like, like that. The temperature was there. So first we call whole operation, we, will, we will gave the name as Operation Petticoat. <laughs> so it was like army, you know, we always give name to the, uh, anything we do. So this operation was given the Operation Petticoat. <laughs> and before that, all these ladies, they were given the army uniforms. We used to wear those, you know, heavy coat per cars. We used to wear that, and the ladies used to shoes, wear that shoes. and practice. And we used to have the snow shoes. So the weight was about the three to four kgs of each, you know, that pair of shoe. And they were they will wear that, and they would walk to practice. So it was those ten days were all the practice. They were asked to march five five kilometers, six kilometers, seven kilometers like this, and then they were acclimatized like this. And then mentally, we had to make them very strong. One thing they had heard these ladies is that there's some place across Nastachun Pass on the way and route, which was called Khuni Nala. Lot of people used to slide down from there, and their body will be found, you know, somewhere it happened somewhere in October, November, body will be found somewhere next May, June, somewhere. You will you'll not be able to even recover the body from there. So that was the problem. See, the lady is very scared of that place. And when I was there, and there were, I think, we had a total of about 37 people with all these families. And I was given a duty that you will take them across. So on the way, they started asking me, when we'll reach Huni Nala? So I thought, okay, if I tell them, they will all be very scared. So I said, I said, all right, once we reach Huni Nala, I will tell you. Like, yeah. So, in, but in my mind, I thought I will never tell them where the Khuli Nala is. Once we cross, I'll tell them. So when they, they kept pressurizing me, why don't you tell me? No, it is there. We already crossed Nasta Chung Pass. It must be there. Why are you not telling us? <laughs> that it has not come. It was very dangerous. That curve was very dangerous. So, I, I stood there and took each, each lady's hand or child's hand and put them across like this. I kept pushing them like this. And when the last person was inside, they said, then I said, now you're across now. Oh, we picked up a they baby went. from the sky. What's that? She's not. Gopal. Did you audio, audio mute, please, others? Thank you. Thank you, sir. That was really wonderful. Uh, great to hear your side of the story. Ishan and Ayana, I can see you. Like, nice to see you. Just to tell the rest of you, that's uh, their father commanded the same battalion as me. I have a question. Colonel Thimaya. So great to see Ishan and Ayana. I think they are in Ahmedabad and Ahmedabad that they are from there. Yes. Sir, uh, I have a Shoya, question. Ishana, you may have a question you can ask after this. So let me ask Claudia for his question. He's, he picked up a baby from a month old. He came in a helicopter. Sarita, your audio is not mute. 
Oh God. <laughs> How do I do that? Yes, Shoria. Sir, yes. I have a question. In army, are the parcels checked before we sent? <laughs> what? Yes, how could sir. how could be the how could the baby come because in the basket? Because the only two people who to check it is the officer who hands over the parcel and the helicopter pilot who receives the parcel. Both of them knew that it is a baby, so it is okay. They were taking a risk and they sent it. Sir, where is the nine? Subir, yes, you have a question. First, Subir, question, please. Sir, I have a question. Subir. Yes. Why did they send the baby in such a long place? The baby could just be right there wherever she was. No, the baby, and you're right, because. After the snow falls, and like you see right now in this photograph, after the pass closes, no civilian is allowed to live on that site who's an army officer's relative, right? They're not allowed to be there. They have to all come back. And anyway, the mother and fathers, they had school to go to in Srinagar, and their, their homes were in Srinagar. They had to come back, right? They're not allowed to stay there. That's why. Ne Neha, you have a question. Uh Yes. Sir, I have a question. Sir, I have a question. Sir, yes. I have a question. Can I, I, will, I will call the person's name and that person will answer the question. You will only raise your hand when this person's finished asking the question. The answer is done. Varnika, I'll ask you. Devanshi, I'll ask you. Neha, yes. Sir, how do you feel when the baby went away with its parents? That is a very good question, yeah. That's a very good question. You know, it's the joy of meeting her again after 38 years was sort of, it made up for the sadness of letting the baby go. Right? So it's great to meet her again after so long. But you're right. After spending one whole night with a baby, you do feel like, it's like a toy has gone away, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. Sir, um, did you know what was coming in the package? No, nothing. I didn't expect it at all. I thought it was a package. But I didn't what know did what it was. you put in the package? What did I expect? Yeah. You could, that's a good question because I didn't know. I was so surprised that normally these type of packages come in a helicopter by porters when they walk across. I was wondering what is a package coming in a helicopter. I didn't really have any idea. I thought it was some military equipment, which is very sensitive and it could not travel and it had to go back for repairs or something else. Right, Devanshi, you have a question. Yes, sir. Sir, suppose that the same incident repeats again, then which moment would you wish, uh, like, would have lasted longer? Like, which moment would you love to live again? Now, honestly, we didn't want the baby to be with us longer because we wanted the baby to be with the mother and father. So, we, I think we wanted it to be shorter because, you know, a 40-day-old baby without the mother and father is of obviously very difficult. So, we didn't want that to be any, any longer than it became. Probably we would have liked for the parents to stay back with the baby for a couple of days at Chokibal rather than go to Srinagar. But they were also... You know, sort of tired from the journey, they wanted to go back home. Right? Are, are also, you sir, are also you sir, looking at the like baby smile, like ma'am is sitting over there, and like as you're narrating, she is smiling, she's giving such a beautiful smile as if she's listening it for the first time. It's so beautiful to look at you. <laughs> Seriously, I can see her so, so good. <laughs> I'm emotional, Devanshi. I must tell you, it's a very yes, yes, yes. yes, I could see that. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Ariman, you have a question because I do. Yeah. Ariman's question. Yeah. So, and as Ranir has a question after that. Yes, Ariman. Colonel Wahi was an army officer, so and in the helicopter they can't take civilians, but then why didn't they take him. 
brilliant question absolutely brilliant question because even in the helicopter if any army person has to travel there has to be a reason to travel you can't just say it's not like a bus that you can just go right so as his job was dq which is appointment he is supposed to not come in helicopter but stay there and do his work so obviously it was difficult to give him permission to come in helicopter mm, okay good question but very good question that's very good ask that question ariman ariman very good question ariman and here someone has a question here rajesh ji yes and ishan ishan uh, also has a question after our after rajesh ji divika nice to see you nice to see you ganakaran <laughs> yes rajesh and tara my mother is rajeshri tara yes uh didn't the baby get hurt in the helicopter it would be a rough ride no the helicopters are not a rough ride i've been in helicopters many times in siachen and in ladakh and all that uh it's noisy it's not like rough indian roads are rougher okay helicopters are not so rough but it's very noisy uh and that can sort of disturb but you know what let's ask neha ma'am at 40 days baby were you disturbed we don't know <laughs> but i think <laughs> neha do you think you were disturbed 40 days old i was enjoying the ride for sure sir it was a privilege nobody gets it at 40 days so i was enjoying <laughs> it <laughs> that is true i suppose you were enjoying ishan ayana question Sir, was there any danger at going out at night? Like, were there any animals at night that came? You are talking about when they were walking across the pass, coming back yes. this side. Yeah. Yeah. Were there any animals at night? Okay, it's so cold out there, and the mountains are, uh, you know, uh, so difficult to be. There are only two types of animals there. They actually bears. and sometimes you see a particular type of a tiger or a leopard rather right there are many types of animals and there are lots of snow dogs which are actually very friendly to people because we feed them and all they are wonderful very we had lots of them in we had lots of them when my father was was doing a course in, no no was commanding in spg what he was commanding SPG. in spg Ah, uh, so very close. The SPG is very close to Chokibal. I don't know if you went from SPG to Chokibal, but it's very close. And you're right. But uh, there are animals, but they don't attack army uh, people walking normally. But if they do, the army has enough protection, right? You know that. So it's not a problem. But bears are there sometimes. It's very interesting to have suddenly see a bear in the snow. we uh well kanakaran if i may please say something yeah who's that because i can't see everyone on the screen i have to keep yeah scrolling. we uh my husband also is in the army and we are from Vika? the same 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 yes divika yes, we are okay. from the same right. unit as colonel kanakaran so <laughs> when the unit was in kashmir again uh, we had uh, our two ic with us the second in command his wife had visited the unit so as luck would have it uh, it's no it uh, snowed and then she had to go back because she was working and she was uh, i think 3 uh, months or 2 or 3 months pregnant so she had no choice but like uh, i think uh, major uh, colonel wahi she had no other choice but to walk so she walked the whole night and uh, divika we lost you Okay, we lost. We lost her. Maybe she'll come back. Okay. So all questions done. Arman, any questions? Shashi, ma'am, any questions? Arman, any questions? Ah, uh, sir, I have one more question. Okay. Let's hear Arman. Why Bhaiya was also in the army? Your Bhaiya is also in the army. Yes, of course. very much he was not only in the army he was in the same army as me <laughs> <laughs> we were in the same unit yes i i i 
Colonel Gopal, I was just wondering when Neha spoke for her 40 year old memory, 40 day old memories. How beautiful was that? Neha, <laughs> to really go down in history, Colonel Gopal has immortalized that light, that baby, really wonderful. Uh, Bam, I wish, you know, I could go back and, uh, you know, just relive this whole thing and that, that feeling of being in his arms, in his hands as a tiny yeah. little one. I want to explain. <laughs> uh, oh, he, he hides that affection a little, you know, being a man, they, they can't yeah. express, they can't express. So I know there that you are, there you are. kind of masks it, but I am so greedy for that affection, for that 40 year, 40 day baby, you know, that, that the baby must have enjoyed. So it's a very warm thing indeed. <laughs> okay. I think Any more questions? Yeah. We are done. Uh, I'm here. Am I See, audible? I the session in thirty minutes, but we did twenty minutes of questions already. Colonel Gopal, I want to speak if I'm audible. Uh, yes, I can. We can hear you. What's your name? Okay, my name is listed at Sai. I'm sorry. I'm not good with technology, but this is Jaya Vahi Neha's elder sister. I I, oh. I hope you can all see me. <laughs> yes, we can. I didn't know how to change that name. I'm really sorry about it, but I hope you can all see me and hear me we now. We can see you. We can see you. We can hear you. And I'm very emotional at this moment. I'm not with the family quarantine in my house, so I could not be joining them and sitting there with everybody. But I am a part of this all, and and I have very warm memories of. I was nine years when Neha was born, so forty days. You also walked nine across the past. You also walked. I walked the across the past, and and I was there when that helicopter flew because the place is very small, Tangthar. So Mama and me were standing outside the house. And the helicopter actually went over and mama was howling and so was I, you know, like we had like lost our baby to the skies, which you retrieved back for us so beautifully, Colonel Gopal. <laughs> we owe you so yeah. much. We owe so much to the pilot who took her because I was told Captain it was at his, Bill. His, Captain his, Bill. Dog, his dog was at stake, his stars were at stake when he took the yeah. baby. You gave everything in that moment to her that night, which you described to us. So, paranoid, you were running for a nipple as a young officer who knew nothing about how babies are fed and what is a nipple. It, it's all so cute and so adorable. I think this whole thing is so emotional for all of us. And Neha is blessed to have experienced this. Saisha is blessed that she's in a, the same school as class and class. Uh, my God, this is too much of... Uh, I, I can't call this... Coincidence, this has to be like divine intervention. That seems like a great way to. Um, all I can Ram. say is the story continues, right? Maybe something will happen 20 years later. So I want to share something. It seems something. to be 20 20 year gaps between our stories, Neha. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much. 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 Thank Yes, sir, I heard the story. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Mom was with me here. Uh, she was hearing the story too. And uh, oh, it was a great lovely. start to a Sunday morning. Uh -huh. Very nice story, sir. Because you, uh, both nice Mimi too. and I are fond of writing stories. Yeah, I know. I think this was really, really. And a true story. A true story. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Thank you very Maybe much, sir. We should have more yeah. of these sessions. <laughs> yeah, these these th these things also happen once in a lifetime. <laughs> so. We are proud of Saisha. We would like to meet her also. <laughs> right. Okay, we can log off. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank bye you. to everyone. Bye. Bye, Gopal sir. Bye. Bye, bye Niharika. Bye, oh, sir. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. That was too much, and uh, I think I really loved all parts of it. Yeah. The fact that so many generations came together to just, you know, vouch yeah. and uh, feed into all of these bits and bits of information was just amazing. Yeah.
That's so right. many generations impacted by that mm. one small gesture. There are always happy stories in life. You just have to look for them. Correct. I wouldn't They're agree more. <laughs> All good Maybe. wishes. I didn't know when we met Neha, how deep yeah. this story is. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Colonel Gopal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I was waiting for everyone to leave. 16 people are still <laughs> there. Please leave. <laughs> <laughs> We've not had enough of you, sir. So. <laughs> No one wants to leave. <laughs> no one wants to leave. No one question. I, I think it's impolite to end the meeting. I'll wait for everyone to exit on their own. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Hridan says if the helicopter was shaking, so was the basket. How did the baby not fall or get injured in the helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so nice. The chats are so good. There are lots of questions there in the chats. <laughs> yeah, thank you, sir, for a lovely enlightening session. The twins loved it. Unfortunately, we had a choppy internet connection, so we could be at home. Okay, people, I'm logging off. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. No question. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. Meeting now, Kel Gopal. Okay. Gaurav, should I end the meeting? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Bye, everyone. What is it, Arjun? Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Arjun? I think his screen got freezed.